So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, W, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> it doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> So welcome back, you guys, to another episode, Travels with Julie. And here I am in really our closest and our local village called Beminster. Now, those of you who are American, like me, when you see the spelling of Beminster, I used to call it Beminster. Be, be a minster sometimes, but it's, I've learned very quickly, it's Beminster. So this is um, our local church. Obviously, we have a church at Mapperton that's connected to the house, but when we're not doing, um, uh, when we're not having services there, we will come here. So in fact, we came here uh, last Christmas. That's right. So gosh, what month is it? Yes, we came here in uh, Christmas 2019 for the Christmas service. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is this? Well, I think that Beminster has done an amazing job. And again, Beminster is about a five minute drive from Mapperton. This is where we go to the shops, get all the things that we need to, um, that we can't find uh, locally at Mapperton. But they've done this uh, uh, amazing initiative called Discover Beminster. And it's all about really making sure, obviously, um, especially with all that's going on in the world, there's this big promotion of stay local and shop local. So this is to really to incentivize, especially all of us who are on staycations, so that there are really fun things to do here at home. So it's very interesting because there's, these are all dotted around Bedminster right now, these scarecrows. And inside there's a letter, there's five, we might probably won't find all nine letters, but it says find all nine letters, uncover the secret name and you could win a prize. And then you go online. So there is a letter here somewhere, Stephen, right? Somewhere there, there is a letter. Oh, that is the letter. Is. Oh, <laughs> okay. That is the letter. You right. That's right. Well done. You found me, but don't remove me. I see what you mean. Discover all nine letters. Oh, it's M. So it must be Beminster, B-E-A-M-I-N-S-T, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, 10, ten, ten um, No, it's nine, so that's 10, so it wouldn't be. So we must remember M, can we just remember that? Should I take a picture? No, we've got an M. So M is one of the letters, and, okay, and we have to find out the secret name. I don't know if we'll get to it, but we'll figure it out. Even if the, I don't get to all nine on this video, I'm gonna let you know what that word is. So there's one. So we're gonna, uh, and again, what the wonderful thing that, again, me being the American, when I moved over here is, you know, all of these towns and villages really have a central point. So Beminster has this wonderful square that you're about to see. And it's just, again, it's the, the central meeting place. It's where a lot of the shops are. But of course you can get this, you know, a wonderful look here as we walk through um, the sleepy streets of Beminster up to the square of just how beautiful, you know, these are like quintessentially just English homes. And I suspect they used to have, of course, all of them would have had thatched roofs. So the thing about thatched roofs is yes, they're beautiful and they are, you know, uh, that is what you sort of, um, when you think about England, you think about thatched roof homes, but of course thatched roof homes are, they're expensive to upkeep. Um, and so with the invention of basically tiles, um, with tiles, uh, a lot of people swapped out the tiles because thatched roofs, I think you have to get them done every about 10 years. I think it's every 10 years. Um, so we might be able to spot one around here, but we're heading up now but isn't it, it's so cute. This is like a quintessentially English, um, uh, English village. And I think it's, have we missed a scarecrow? We haven't missed a scarecrow yet, have we? So we're just coming up to the square right now. And again, this is like the central point um, really of many towns and villages here in England. So I'm now heading down to the Alarad, but Let's just stop right here. This is one, of, well, this is my favorite house in the entire square. Don't tell anybody, but how could it not be? It's like perfect. It's perfect, perfect. And I have to get a picture in front of it. So Stephen, can you take a photo of me? I mean, I mean, I have to, right? I'm still a tourist. I still feel. 
Three, two, one. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Sorry. I'm such, honestly, you guys, I swear I still do this. I'm not just doing this for the camera. I still do that everywhere. That is so cute. Like anytime I see something like that in England, I'm like, I have to get a picture in front of it. So, um, and again, this is, um, one of my favorite, um, well, definitely here in Dorset, it is the um, uh, go-to place. Obviously, we've got, we're lucky because we've got Mapperton Gardens, so we can get stuff from there, but sometimes I do come in here and get things from Kate at Rambling Rose in particular, especially over the Christmas period. Um, Kate helps me decorate the house, so, and Kate also lives on uh, Mapperton Estate, so Kate also lives in a, in a house um, on the estate. But Kate is amazing, and she helps me decorate the house so much over the Christmas period. She is brilliant. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hi. All right, so... You guys know that A, obviously at Mapperton Gardens, we love flowers. <laughs> and so, and Kate here has the best floral shop. Is that what you call it? Is it a floor? It's what a little you, flower shop. It's a flower little store. Little yeah. flower store. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna say in West Dorset. There we go. So this is Rambling Rose. And so Thank for those you. of you who come to my yoga retreats, or if you do come to my yoga retreats, Kate is always the one making sure that on the last night, the dinner, setting the tables so that they're beautiful with all of these different um, flowers. So here's Kate. And Kate also <laughs> lives at Mapperton. <laughs> I know. I'm so lucky to live at Mapperton. It's um, great. Well, you say that only because I'm here. Is that right? No, I love where I live. My okay. little cottage is perfect. I know. I so you it. do. That's right. So this will make sense for you. those of you who watched the episode with the sheep, the new sh the new Mapperton sheep that arrived. That field there. Kate's. It's my field. It's your field. That is <laughs> your not, field. They're not my sheep and it's not my field. field. But, but I feel very connected. Because yeah, your cottage is right there. Exactly. Your so Kate obviously has a love of flowers, but give a little bit of history behind sort of just what got you into flowers and because how cute is this flo wow. flower store? It's the cutest. The, and the name Rambling Rose. Okay, over to you, Kate. Okay, so I was a florist in London for many years, working for some quite... I mean, it goes way back. My mum and dad are really keen gardeners. My dad, in my childhood, I was dragged around great country houses, checking out rhododendrons and da-da-da with my dad and thought it was the most boring thing in the world. Then, weirdly, once you get older, you suddenly realise these things are quite amazing and quite interesting. So that's where my sort of love of flowers came about. Right. Then I had the fortune of working for two of the best florists in London, Wild at Heart, uh, Nikki Tibbles, yep. and my great friend Vic Brotherson at uh, Scarlet and Violet. And that was literally yeah. my career, and I ran crazy events all over the world. I worked for bonkers people. It was amazing. Really huge budgets. But I started feeling that the whole feeling of importing flowers didn't sit right with me. So I now have a little flower store. I don't do quite such grand things, but that suits me fine. Uh, but most of it's locally grown. Locally grown. We're all about In local the summer these months, days. it's pretty much all local and within like a 10 mile radius. I have a flower grower in Melplash, one near Lyme oh. Regis, one in Sherbourne, one over near Taunton, and I just buy all local flowers, which that is, is just amazing. You know, grown not flown. Right, grown is not my flown. Little motto. I mean, that is huge. So, and that is that you know that is what I think we're all, especially after we've all gone through and we're still in it, but this pandemic, yeah. we're all about local now. What is there to do local? Why do we have to fly so much? Why do we have to fly things in? Mm -hmm. So it's looking at how we can do more. And can you just give us, just give the viewers here, just maybe like, I, you know me, I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't think I know the name of any of these flowers right here, apart from the roses. <laughs> No. You, well, you were good with your Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, foraging. We foraged and we oh, decorated the whole house. I should <laughs> say this. So when you guys see the um, Matt Britton specials on the Smithsonian Channel, which will then come to Amazon Prime and iTunes and Apple TV, um, 
uh, I can't give too much away, so I have to be careful here, but there's a Thanksgiving scene that was done that by was Kate. Fun. So the whole centerpiece was done by Kate. The wreath on the door for the Christmas episode, I hope I'm not giving too much away, was done by Kate. And when we had the drinks party, which you're gonna see as well, I'm probably giving so much away, yeah. we created this amazing um, uh, mantle, uh, uh, what do you call it? Over yeah, mantle it piece. Was, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, we, but, um, so I don't know if all that made the cut. I'm not sure the over mantle made the cut to it. Cause I, you know how they edit it, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. the sure. wreath made it and the, um, uh, the, obviously the centerpiece for yeah, the Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. But you did a, what, you did a, remember you did a workshop with me in my barn and yeah, you made your own wreath. I know. So I you know. do have green yeah. fingers. <laughs> I do, I do. I did make my own wreath. You're right. I did make my own wreath. So anyway, I'm going to do that again this year. Yeah. Yeah. You decorated the whole house. Yeah, Our family got involved. Yeah, I know. We do the swag. Well, we do you do the all swags. Those swags. It's so, great. Yeah, so we do do the swags. You're going to see that as well in the episodes. I can't give too much away. I'm going to get fired. I'm kidding. I'm just not. Watch but it. It just watch great. it. Just watch it. But when, but notice these things when you see them. That they've a lot of the floral arrangements have come from Kate here at Rambling Rose, um, which is great. So again, another amazing uh, sort of you know local shop here in Bedminster, two minutes from Mapperton. Uh, it's great. So we're focusing on Beminster. How cute is it? It's so great cute. Time. Um, it's great. 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 Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Sure. Nice to see you. You too. And um, yeah, we're going to head off to the next one. Okay. We're going to we'll go see Louise. Soon. We'll catch up soon. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you about yoga retreats. Okay. For sure. Bye, okay. Bye. Bye. But let's head down to the Alarod now. And again, Alarod is, oh, Scarecrow. Here we go. It's a different letter. It's an R. So that means we've got two M's and an R. What's that gonna be? Summer, S-U-M-M-E-R. No, 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 it's nine, nine. Okay, all right, well, let's head to the all around. Steven's doing a great job walking backwards. Don't worry, everybody, I'm looking out to make sure that he is going to be okay. So again, a lot of people when they come to visit Mapperton, they're always looking for places to stay. And we are gonna go to a fantastic uh, bed and breakfast, if you like. Fantastic bed and breakfast. Uh, and the, but the food, it, it also, everything about the Alarad is fantastic. The food is wonderful. Uh, we ate here last night, and I think Silvana, uh, uh, one of two, the two, there are uh, a couple, um, Silvana and Chris, I know Silvana's here. And we're just gonna, she's gonna let me have a little tour inside the Alarod. And of course, this red phone box definitely is not in use anymore. It's still open. No. I don't think that works, Stephen. What do you think? I mean, don't worry, I'm gonna hand sanitize after this. No. See, a lot of them. But they're, they're iconic. I mean, this is literally iconic red letterbox. Okay, one second. Just gonna hand sanitize, people. Hand sanitize. A cute shot, though. Mm-hmm, okay. All right, let's go into the Alarod. Nice car park, beautiful. Look at, oh, I mean, it is special. And I mean, to have such, you know, wonderful Brassica restaurant and then the Alarod in such a very, very tiny, um, in a very, you know, tiny town, if you like, is quite extraordinary. We're very, very lucky. We feel very lucky to be so close at Mapperton, to be so close to um, all the wonderful offerings here in Beminster. All right, so we're gonna head in. So we're coming into the Alarod and believe it or not, I did just eat here last night. So fingers crossed Silvana is here. So Silvana owns and runs this place with her husband. The food is outstanding. The rooms are incredible. And we're just gonna give you a little tour around. So when you come to Mapperton and you want a place to stay, this is the place to stay. Trust me, this is the food. 
Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So again, in the winter months, and, and this is beautifully lit, as you can see all the fairy lights, and um, it's warm, and then you can come out, even in the winter months, you, we've eaten out here because this is shielded, but last night, look at this. Oh, it's wonderful. So last night, we ate outside here. We had these two tables together, and I know I'm gonna find Silvana here and she's gonna, I had the most, it was like pickled cabbage. Oh, everything was delicious. So we're gonna talk about that. And it was packed last night, social distancing style, of course. Then through here, so when you stay here, of course, you have, you can have, look at, I mean, look at this garden. Yep, it's not a backyard, it's a garden. So you've got this beautiful garden here. You can have your cups of tea. We have somehow amazing steve in this weather has been incredible and i've even had it in here this is like again another place to eat but i've been there for a private um dinner party there before so private dinner party there i mean the food is phenomenal the rooms are incredible the alarad this is the place to stay and let's also remember everybody that when you come to this part of england how far away are you from the Jurassic Coast, Stephen? Eight miles. Eight miles, that's it. So eight miles from the Jurassic Coast. So the beautiful cliffs and the beach are uh, all right there. So we're heading into here, and again, this is just a lovely uh, seating area. Let's just head in here. In the winter, this, uh, I've been in here with drinks before in the winter, Big, huge fire right here, big, huge fire. I mean, it's cozy, it's quintessentially English. And then we're coming into another part and I'm so hoping that Silvana was here. And she is, hi! I know, I'm back in less than 24 hours. I know, it's so, well, I've just done a little tour around. Um, I mean, I'm just telling everybody who's watching that this is the place to stay. Because not only, we just did a tour around Beminster, the village, but you've got Mapperton, of course. Amazing. And <laughs> close to the sea. Yes, this yep. is what's so great about this area. You've got, you know, you've got the most incredible English countryside. Dorset has, I don't know who I'm supposed to be talking yeah, to. Yeah, both. <laughs> both me and them. Well, you know. <laughs> Dorset has the most incredible rolling hills, but we're also kind of 12 minutes from the Jurassic Coast, which is beautiful. Which is so beautiful. We really do have the best of both worlds. So. Now, you're probably asking if you're going to be chatting, watching this, saying that Silvana doesn't sound English. No, I don't. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know. You, you might think I sound English, but I'm, a, I'm not. I'm actually a South African. From so. South Africa. Yes. Exactly. So, so Silvana and Chris, if you, well, okay, we're going to talk about the food in a second, but explain to me, you took over the running, uh, you, you, you took this over how many years ago? Three? Uh, or two, 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 near, not even two and a half yet. So wow. uh, we took over at the end of March 2018, so yeah. And what have you done with it? Because it used to be, I, I mean, I did come here before when it was a hotel, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was it did still have a restaurant, but it was just a completely different style. So um, there was no bar, kind of, it didn't have, it, it was a lot more focused on residents as opposed to locals and kind of, you know, creating a vibe and what's going on. And look, a drink's changed. Yeah, yeah, you. exactly. It's so good. We love that. By the way, when you see all the empty tables, it's only because I've come in here at a time at basically three o'clock in the afternoon before tea time and mm. after lunch, <laughs> if you're yeah. wondering, yeah, I think because I don't want to film people who are here. I mean, I, that would be so intrusive. So we picked the right time. Thank you. But can we also, so how many bedrooms do you have? We have 13 bedrooms. 13. Um, we had 14, but we changed one and one was very small. So we changed it into a little treatment room where we kind of do um, massages, yep. facials, that, that kind of yep. thing. So You've added a little bit of well-being. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Yeah. And then, and the rooms are beautiful. So people, as I was saying before, people who come to visit Mapperton, this is the place where they stay. But let's also discuss the food. Because I was here last night with my husband, three out of four of my children, and one of my children's boyfriend. And we, it's, it's like our special place to go when we're celebrating something. And I think we, we almost were sort of celebrating being back together after the pandemic. So we were together for lockdown. Then things have opened up a little bit. And then we all ended up back down here again. And we were like, what better place to celebrate? But the food, can, it's because it, Chris is Chris Michelin is star. He, he's an amazing, amazing. I mean, obviously, I would say that. But he genuinely is an amazing chef. Um, so the, the whole 
point of us taking over here was that we didn't want to be a hotel, we wanted to be a restaurant with rooms. So the, the main focus really is on the food yeah. and um, you know we, we try and get people to come and stay here because they want to eat and, and it's happening which is which is amazing oh sorry um, yeah so yeah he's he's a he's a he's a fab chef he um, I moved here from South Africa I had no intent to stay met him <laughs> fell in love with the crazy British chef and that's why we're here and this is why we've got this place um, but he loves obviously we have the best produce in Dorset we're incredibly lucky not only as Julie was saying we've got the ocean just around the corner yeah but the farming the uh, we have probably one of the luckiest areas in the whole of England really yeah for what we've got here so a lot of amazing local produce from Dorset and from Somerset because we're actually on the border of Somerset yeah. um, and he he loves Asian food um, so kind of a Southeast Asian food so he brings little kind of hints of it in and he's really good at balancing so um, the, the tuna dish that's, that's yeah. some of your... Yeah, the we, Luke had. Uh, Luke had, Emma had, Emma's boyfriend yeah. had, and William yes, had. So four right. out of six yeah. of my party last night ordered, what was it? it um, was the so it's a, a, a tuna tartare with a, a ponzu sauce and it's got a wasabi ice cream on it, which all sounds very weird. And there's a whole, you know, there's a, oh. a pickled radish. It, it sounds... We're gonna get that. It, we're gonna oh, put that in there. We're gonna get the a picture of, of, of everything. I'll send that to you. Yeah. Can you send that yeah. and any photos that you have that we can Absolutely. just put up? Yeah. Also, can I just say that I because I didn't have I had my okay the soup that I had the aj am I pronouncing the right the ajo blanco That's, yeah it's a uh, oh my <laughs> gosh you guys so it's white almonds is that, that right that's it it's a, it's young young almonds um so they're still white and garlic it's traditionally a spanish soup um so chris has kind of taken it and made it his own so he's lightened and brightened it up so if you have it in spain it's very garlicky um, right which uh, which obviously you know is, is a very spanish thing yeah but it's for our for our palate it's, it's almost too garlicky so he's taken it and just completely transformed it into this delight <gasps> and, yeah there's there's tomatoes and, and grapes and apple and and that. then you can and you can add fresh crab because yes. remember we're by the sea so i did everybody here knows that i eat fish so i added i had the crab in it yeah. it was everything so we're gonna get show you guys the the menu and what i want to do one of the episodes that we want to do is coming back here and just almost if we can do some type of cooking or something oh, with it. chris i think and that people could do at home even a couple recipes that maybe they can do at home and then maybe one recipe that he does that's special yeah, by himself absolutely. but do you know what I mean that we can just talk about the local produce so this is just a taster and a teaser yeah. you guys yeah no i'm not i'm probably not doing his food much justice he's my i will better. do it justice <laughs> it's I mean, literally, the food is phenomenal. It's Thank so you. good. So, again, you guys, when you come down here, when the borders open up, those of you who are um, who are watching this from America, and I know you're going to want to come and visit Matt Britton. We did the episode, if you haven't seen it, of the fish and chips at Sea Town, and which was great. Yeah. And just there's so much to see here in Southwest England. It's incredible. It really is. It's, it's incredible. And you must stay here as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you don't stay here, you must eat here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. Stay and eat here. Stay and eat here. Stay and eat here. I've just spotted another scarecrow. So now I'm slightly obsessed with discovering Beminster. So I need to, I mean, we're going to carefully cross the road here. So I'm going to, I think, I think there's like three scarecrows there. There is definitely one over there and one over there. We actually might get all nine. We're gonna get, we're gonna figure this out. I'm gonna win. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to, I need to cross the road to a zebra crossing. So I know, it, and it does look like a zebra, but of course in this country, it's not called a zebra, it's called a zebra. And the other thing is, is did you know, these are all my fun facts, that when you do the alphabet, they don't say, they don't end in the letter Z, they do Z. So you do call it Z, don't you, Stephen? So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> it doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> okay, so let's cross the zebra crossing. Thank you. This is an amazing, uh, vegetarian cafe and they actually have really good 
coffee there as well because I've been to that one as well. So, uh, and you can see it's a coffee shop as well. Really sweet um, trading post and cafe, uh, and uh, another great spot for uh, something veggie. Okay, the letter is. Oh dear, I hope nobody ripped it off. It's really. Oh, here it is. Got it. Oh, it, oh my gosh. It says, oops, I'm only a decoy. <laughs> Good luck. And so they did make it hard. I was like, this is too obvious. Here, it's, yeah, I, okay, decoy. It's a decoy. I'm just gonna say it's a decoy because there's, <laughs> because there's nothing, there's one across there. But isn't that too obvious or no? I don't know. Okay, so then I've been to the Greyhound Inn. So the Greyhound Inn, you know, good for a pint. So this is a pub, good for a pint. Another one, oh, it's a decoy. So do we think that one was a decoy? Oops, I don't really like these decoys. I, um, cute, yeah, exactly. Cute barber shop right there. Barber on the square. I don't know, I just love that stuff. I'm like a sucker for anything cute. Um, then, again, wonderful, windy, um, beautiful English streets here. Oh yeah, that's a great shot. Fish and chips. <gasps> Should we just go down to the local fish and chip shop? So always in every, I mean, literally in every village and town in, oops, I'll just wave. So always, 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 always in every, you know, basically English town and village, you are going to find a fish and chip shop without fail. And I can tell you during the lockdown, when this opened back up for delivery, this was the first place we went to was the traditional fish and chips and they really are traditional and this was I, I I can remember this moment you guys when things started opening back up and we went and we drove up and we got our obviously takeaway stood out here there's a little bit of a queue and it was like you know because you, you've been cooking for months and you're like oh my gosh somebody has cooked for me and we got traditional fish and chips and it's funny how I remember I've had a million fish and chips in my lifetime since being over here in England and I remember that one poignantly of getting the fish and chips here and being over ecstatic about having fish and chips. So this has a really good memory, I think, for all of us because we were just so excited to get the fish and chips. So we're coming up uh, again back into the square. This is a fantastic, uh, beautiful shop, Brassica Mercantile. And um, this is the shop to go to for everything. Wouldn't you say so, Louise? <laughs> Um, it's just brilliant. I bought cashmere gloves here before in the winter months. We've always come in here and bought different, like we've, I've definitely bought, I think I've bought some uh, little mugs, I'm sure before, and then definitely always food. Always the food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the food is part of what we do in the restaurant as well. So we sort of combine the two, um, which you'll see in a minute. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So you've got, you've got Brassica Mercantile, yeah. and then you've got Brassica. So if you've watched my social media um, before, you know that any time I go eat at Brassica and I'm down here, I always Instagram about it because Cass, your partner, is mm -hmm. the chef. He is indeed, yeah. And it's absolutely delicious. So definitely one of my favorite restaurants in West Dorset. And you've won awards. Well, we'll talk about yeah, that later. You've exactly. won awards. Yeah. We're good. So tell us just the viewers here, when they come to Mapperton and you visit Mapperton and we're talking about local things to do here, Beminster, as you've seen, such a cute um, town. It's got the square. Um, you've seen the church. We've already done the church. Tell us a little bit about the shop and how and your background. Okay, so we came home from London about six years ago. Uh, my husband had a chain of restaurants in London called Canteen, and I was working in interiors as a consultant um, and had been a buyer at many places in London. And we just wanted to bring the two together and come to the countryside. So we um, have opened a shop and a restaurant. We did like want them to be in the same space, but that obviously hasn't happened. We've got a shop here and a restaurant over the road. And it's really just everything I like. And a lot of the stuff 
we use in the restaurant. So if it's the glassware or the textiles or the food items, we use them in the restaurant as yeah. well. So if someone's having a really nice meal and really likes a napkin or something, they can come in here and buy it. Oh, see, that's clever. Mm -hmm. That is very clever. Also, I'm just going to point out, just like Kate, I'm going to say this, Cass and Louise live at Mapperton. We do, indeed. <laughs> exactly. We've got the best view in West All, Dorset. You do have the best yeah. view in West Dorset. Do, Their indeed. home is beautiful. Definitely the best view. So can you just, are there a few, couple favorites here that you maybe want to show off before we head to the restaurant? Um, yeah, so some of the textiles. Yeah, so, the textiles are so. So lovely. the Liberty print, the cushions, definitely. I think textiles is definitely the thing I like buying the most. So textiles, so the Liberty print here and here, and then this is um, work of a, a Parisian, um, a Parisian designer called Natalie Lette, who does the most amazing prints. So Aww. she's done this and some other things like this. Are definitely my favourite. So she's sort of kind of slightly crazy. Um, I love textile that. artist. Goes quite well with These, what you're wearing. Oh my um, gosh! Anyway, so I love I love her oh. work. So those things, but obviously, as you can probably see, colour and pattern are quite important. Yeah, yeah, and just, yeah, um, yeah. But Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's a sort of slightly funny time of year. We've just done a lot of ordering. There was obviously no trade shows because there's no travel. Yeah. But um, we've been doing some online trade show uh, showrooms, and we've just sort of placed loads of orders for stuff. So in the next. I say months or six weeks, lots of new stuff because obviously people start buying for Christmas quite early. That's right. So when you come to visit, <laughs> and those of you in America, when you're allowed to come to visit, and you visit Mapperton and the gardens, obviously, definitely, Beminster yeah. is. I mean, we literally, you know, this is our local village, and yeah. it's it's you wonderful. Can walk here. We can walk here. Exactly. Yeah. I haven't done that yet, though. Oh, it's great. It's really nice. <laughs> it's a really nice. What we do it quite often. I'm, okay. Oh, how long does it take you? An hour and a yeah. half. Oh, okay. No, it's a really good walk. Okay, there. okay. It's only two miles away, is that right? Yeah. Okay, it, but, but it, I know it's... It's, yes, but like, like that. that. But no, it's great. Um, all right, let's head to the restaurant. Okay. So we're going to head to the restaurant. And it's right there. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, this is wonderful. Stephen, did you get the shots of the cute tables outside? Everything's cute for me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's cute. But can I just say that when we started coming to Brassica, the one thing that I re that really stood out, of course the food did as well, but is the way that you've decorated it. It's just brilliant. It looks like my shop. Yeah, it looks like your shop. I mean, yeah. it's just everything. It's just brilliant. Yeah, yes, so but this is just your So background. yeah, so this is obviously, it's got slightly less tables in it at the moment, because we have yeah. to. Um, but yeah, I mean, what Cass and I wanted to create was something where the food and the interiors sort of come together. And also when you walk in here, you feel totally comfortable. It's not formal. I think the thing about Cass and I are we're not formal people and we wanted that to be sort of relayed in the type of food he does and that you can come here dressed up in your heels or you can come in your wellies it it doesn't maybe yeah. not maybe not vest tops or something but yeah <laughs> um, i've done wellies men, no. i've done wellies <laughs> before look, <laughs> um but you know so you feel comfortable who and also you can come with your kids or um yeah. it's just yeah it's a place where people there's no sort of um i don't know uh restrictions or anything yeah. it's just really a warm place to come and it i is. think we've achieved it um obviously cass's food shines out and that you know he's um does a lot of local produce so he he we forage for mushrooms in mapperton we uh pick a lot of brat breeze in mapperton yeah. at the moment well, i'm going to be doing a foraging yep. episode soon yeah yep. um and also there's lots of amazing farms around here and so a lot of our food although it's got an italian slant to it it's very much the produce from around here, which yeah. we're really lucky. It's amazing. Yeah. To, um, it is, and it, it's amazing that you. I, I'm bringing in a. This is. I'm bringing in a forager, everybody. Okay. So I'm bringing. Do you know John Wright? I, I, we sell his <gasps> book, the Forager's yeah. Calendar. Yeah. yeah. So he's. I he's just, down at Made in Newton. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I just got his book, and then I emailed him. I'm like, Are you local by chance? He was yeah. like, Yeah, I'm in Made in Newton. I'm like, Can we come forage together? So he's yeah. coming. I'm gonna forage with Brilliant. him. Brilliant. It's my new thing. Because he's gonna tell you where he goes. He, well, he says he looked on Google Maps. Sorry, everybody, but you're going to yeah. get this episode. He's looked on Google Maps to see where mushrooms are yeah. and stuff like that. Well, tell us where the mushrooms are. Yeah, well, you'll find out. <laughs> exactly. We've so been we're looking. Gonna, I'm going to look. I'm going to just go, like, look at these. I just love all the cushions and the design and, of course, the social distancing space here. So it's perfect. And um, I will, I, you, Cass, uh, Louise, you wouldn't remember this, but we have, we've had many 
believe it or not, celebration dinners down here. So I'm just about to take Jack up to Edinburgh for his first year. And I remember when he got into Edinburgh and then we all came down from London. Um, I remember sitting at this table over there and it was Jack's celebration dinner for getting into Edinburgh because that was a big feat for Jack. <laughs> so, <laughs> Get on him. Um, so anyway, so when you come down, you guys, to Bemintzer, and many of you who have come to my yoga retreats, if you're watching this, I know that this is the place that I always say to come, uh, you know, before you check in at Mapperton, come and have lunch here. And even on the day that you leave Mapperton, usually it's on a Sunday, you can come here and have lunch, have dinner, and it's just delicious food. Thank you very, so, very much. Thank you. Um, again, I'm sure we, we tried to get in last night, but you know, look, you know what it is? I'm going to tell you. Luke just thinks, and my husband thinks he can just ring up 15 well, minutes it's beforehand. Because we've and I'm also, like, we normally come because we've got less tables. Yeah. They get booked up. Exactly. I'm like, you've got to go digital, Luke. You've got to go online and book it. <laughs> and get on social media. Yeah. And get on social media. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Thanks, thank Louise. You, it's thank been you great. very much. Lovely um, to see you. Yeah. See you um, soon. So you must come visit here. Um, definitely Brassica. Uh, one of my favorite places and um, yeah it's delicious and amazing so this is Bemidzer I mean it is buzzing today absolutely buzzing <laughs> and uh, which is great um, which is great to see uh, because I obviously came here when we were allowed to um, just after lockdown and it was and to actually to go uh, the local supermarket was there very very small so we were able to go there and queue up and it was just so you know I like everywhere else it was very very dead so it's just nice to see it's really buzzing um, so again hope you guys enjoyed uh, this is probably one of my favorite episodes to film so far just because it's so nice being local and to see when you walk around the square and say hi to everybody so hopefully when you come to visit Mapperton you can also visit all of these places here wonderful places here at Beminster and actually say hi to Kate and say hi to Silvana and say hi to Louise um, and yeah so a huge thank you to all of my patrons and in particular those of you in the top tier so to Cheryl and Sherry Angeline Taylor and Robert thank you guys but all of you guys thank you so much and yeah hope to see you here in Beminster.